we are starting with a new topic which has been recently introduced into our syllabus of NEET and that is in the chapter of structural organization in animals. They have introduced frog in our syllabus. So that is what we are going to talk about. The most common Indian frog is Rana Tigrina. This is the scientific name of our Indian frog. These frogs are amphibians. So we place them in class amphibia. And amphibians are those animals which can live in water as well as on land. So in water as well as on land. The requirement of water is for their reproduction and that is why they are always found closer to the water body many a times in the water body or closer to the water body and they are in phylum chordata frogs which we see around us they are visible only during a particular season that is rainy season rainy season is the season when they breed that is the breeding season and during extreme cold and hot conditions, they go into a state of reduced metabolism, which is known as hibernation and astivation. And the reason for this is that they are poikilotherms. Poikilotherms means they are cold blooded. Cold blooded animals are those which cannot maintain their body temperature. Their body temperature changes according to the outer temperature. That means if it becomes very low, say the temperature comes to 4 or 5 degrees, their body temperature will come as close as 4 or 5. At this low temperature, metabolism does not take place or does not work. Same situation happens if the temperature goes high, that is during summer. So to avoid these extreme conditions, they go into summer sleep and winter sleep, which are known as hibernation. Hibernation is winter sleep. And astivation, which is summer sleep. During this period, they remain in that state where the metabolism is very, very low. Before getting into hibernation and astivation, they store reserve food and they burrow in the mud. And during this, these periods, the metabolism is very slow and they survive only on that stored food material which they have. Normally, the frogs, they are olive green in color. Their skin is olive green. The skin is very slimy because it is a mucous membrane. We will talk about the skin a little later. So they are normally olive green, but they have the capability of changing their skin color. This property is known as camouflage. They can change the skin color. And this property is also known as mimicry. So they can camouflage. This is called the mimicry. So now when they are on the grass, they appear green. And when they are sitting on the bark of the tree, their skin is going to be like little brownish. So that they can easily blend in their surrounding. If we look at the morphology, that means how they appear from outside. As I said, the color of the skin is greenish to brown. So skin color, dorsal and ventral side is different. The dorsal side, that means which is visible to us from the top, is olive green to brown, depending upon which surrounding they are sitting on. And the ventral side is pale yellow. So this is the ventral and this is the dorsal side. 
So the skin color is variable, but most of the times we see them a little greenish. The skin is moist. And this is because they have mucus glands due to mucus glands. The body is divisible into head and trunk. So if we try to draw, say, a simple diagram to understand how the frogs are going to look. So let us see. The body is olive green from the top. And we are very much familiar with the frogs which we see around us. And here you see bulging eyes. So this is the eye. And here is another bulge. So again a pair of eyes. The hind limbs, let us draw the hind limbs here. Very big, prominent hind limbs. Okay, so this is our frog. And body is divisible into the head and the trunk. Head and trunk. They do not have neck and there is no tail in the adult frogs. So, Tadpole or the larval stage will show us uh, the tail or has tail, but in adult frogs, we don't see the tail. Now, this is the forelimb. So, they have a pair of forelimbs. Forelimbs are comparatively smaller and less stronger as compared to these hind limbs. Hind limbs are longer and stronger because they have to leap or jump. That is why the hind limbs are very strong. Now, these are the eyes. So, eyes are bulging eyes. They have bulging eyes, a pair of eyes. And here we would see tiny openings which are the nostrils. The eyes are very prominent and very bulgy. Now, just behind the eyes, there is another patch which is visible. So, there is a prominent patch which is visible here. One is on this side, other will be on the other side. And this is tympanum. Tympanum is the eardrum. They do not have pinna. So, this is the eardrum. Pinna is absent. That is external ear is absent. So when we look at the frog, the body is divisible into the head part and the trunk part. Neck is not there. And this is because they have to have a streamlined body so that they can swim very easily in uh, the water. So to avoid that, neck is not there. Hind limbs we can see are very, very uh, strong and longer. The digits in the forelimb, there are four digits and the hind limb has five digits or hind limbs have five digits. Between these digits are the folds of skin. So here there are these folds of skin which are known as webs. So we say they have webbed feet. So these folds, they are the webs and help the frog to swim. So we can fill this. These are the webs, the folds of the skin. Male and female frogs can be distinguished easily. That means they show sexual dimorphism. In case of the male frog, the first finger or first digit of the forelimb on the ventral side, not on the dorsal side, on the ventral side has a paddy structure. I am going to draw it here only. So here there is a paddy structure and this paddy structure is known as the copulatory pad. This is found only in case of the male frogs. It is called 
the copulatory pad or it is also known as nuptial pad. This is found only in male frogs, only in male frogs. And its function is, it is used to hold the female during copulation. Again, we will talk about this when we come to the process of fertilization, which is seen in case of the frogs. So this is one difference. The second difference is, in male frogs, in this lower head region, here in this region, there is a flap which is vocal cord. So the vocal cords are prominent in case of the male frogs. Not, it is not there in case of female. So these are the vocal cords. So it is in the form of a pouch which is there and they make the croaking sound basically. So male frogs will have this copulatory or nuptial pad on the inner side of the first digit of the forelimb and there would be vocal sacs or vocal cords. It can also be known as a sac, vocal sac, which is a big uh, balloon-like structure which create or which may, helps them make a sound and this sound is used to attract the females. So this is the outline structure or what we call the morphology. Details of all these things we will take up later. When we come to respiration, we will talk about the skin also. So, here we have just completed the morphology part of the frog.